A recording has gone viral on social media this week, which purports to be a teacher telling school pupils they don't have a choice but to learn about LGBTQ++ issues. Let's listen to a part of the recording. And let me make this very clear. You don't have a choice whether or not you learn about LGBTQ plus in this school. You don't have a choice. It's one of our values, the British value. And if you refuse to do it, that will be dealt with severely. Why would I not? Why would I care if, you, if anyone in this room wants to love somebody, whether it be a man or a woman? Why would I care if someone wants to say, do you know what, I'm, I don't know if I'm, if I'm more male or female. I, I'm, I'm exploring. Why does that matter to me? This has all prompted questions about whether children should be force-fed an LGBTQ plus agenda in schools. And that leads us to this week's duel. It is time for the duel, and to debate this topic, I'm joined by my brilliant duelists, my sidekick Emma Webb, and this week's nemesis, founder of Navarra Media, Aaron Bastani. Uh, the teacher in question seems to me, guys, to be quite emotional, taking this quite mm -hmm. personally. It seems to be agenda-driven. Aaron, what were your initial thoughts upon uh, hearing that? Well, there's the longer clip on Twitter, which is, obviously, it's always more informative to hear a longer clip. I understand for yeah. broadcast TV, you can't play the whole thing. Um, I thought the manner in which he's communicating the points are very unprofessional. Mm. If I was a parent, I would be disappointed uh, that a teacher was speaking to kids in that way. Children need to be persuaded, and young, young adults and young, sort of, you know, young people, need to be persuaded of things, generally speaking. It doesn't need to even necessarily be about social values, etc. Yeah. And, and, and persuasion should always be at the forefront of teaching. I'm, I'm sure that person knows that. I think they probably know they've fallen short of the professional standards rightly expected of them. Mm -hmm. In terms of the content where he's saying that they don't have a choice about the lesson, that is true, technically true. Um, they have a choice. They can be removed by their parents in regards to other kinds of teaching, sex ed, for instance. Mm. That doesn't apply to this. Um, so there's a part of me which says, you know what, children should be subjected to ideas they don't necessarily agree with. And that's just part of the social contract in this country. I remember doing religious education. All the kids in the class were learning about Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, Islam. There was one kid that didn't. He was pulled out by his parents. And I remember my parents saying, that's not on. Right. The rest of you are having to learn about a wide range of faiths. You're going to live and work with these people in the future. It's good to know what they believe in. And this child is being pulled out and they thought that was wrong. So I think it's good that we have a shared learning experience, education experience for all children. And I think ultimately if parents have an issue with what's being taught, generally speaking, obviously like I've said with sex education, there's an exception there. Generally speaking, they just say to the child, well, look, we think it's wrong, you think it's wrong. That's how the world is. Sometimes you meet people you disagree with. You'll, you know, proceed to your, you know, next well, year's education before, in school next year. Before I get to Emma, I just, I just want to push you on this because you're saying we should be taught a wide range of views in schools. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Yeah. But is this being taught as one among many views or is yeah. this being taught as the only appropriate yeah. view? No, it's a great point. And incidentally, and perhaps ironically, because, you know, some people, um, well, many people actually, let's be honest, denigrate um, human rights legislation and the European Convention on Human Rights. The complainants, the parents of this child in their complaint letter um, cite uh, European human rights law saying that teaching should happen in a way which is, I believe, objective, critical and pluralistic. Mm. And clearly the language this gentleman adopts is not pluralistic and I think that's really important. All right, thank you for that, Aaron. Now, Emma, Aaron's right, the teacher's right. They don't have a choice. They have mm -hmm. to learn this stuff. And this is a Conservative government policy mm -hmm. in that sex education was always optional. Parents could take their kids out of sex education. Uh, mostly it happened for religious reasons. Mm -hmm. But now relationship and sex education have been combined to, into one. So it's very, very difficult to take your child out of a sex ed class when the sex ed is part of the relationship ed. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the problem is there? Well, I think the policy is the problem there. I mean, they're obviously, I think Aaron's right, that the way that this teacher was addressing the pupils was actually quite aggressive mm. um, and obviously completely inappropriate. But ultimately, the problem is, and this is a point that Kemi Badenoch has, the minister Kemi Badenoch has made, in relation to um, other contested ideologies like critical race theory, that the, the gender ideology that is behind, implicit in what that teacher was saying, that will ha have been brought into classrooms partly f from third parties, organisations like Stonewall, mm. sometimes proposing things that 
very actively go against existing equalities education or misrepresent equalities legislation. They will be bringing this radical, contested ideology into schools and teaching it in, in a context where parents don't have their parental right to remove their children from, from what I think many would regard as straightforward indoctrination because this isn't traditional teaching. This isn't just, for example, teaching people about Hinduism, teaching students about different religions in a factual way. This is, as we saw from that clip, trying to teach children how to think in terms of their values. Mm. It's, teaching, it's teaching them a particular ideological way of seeing the world and quite clearly not allowing the students to actually be critical of those views. It's not presenting an alternative position on this. And I think ultimately parents should have the right to be able to remove their children from those lessons if they believe they are being taught and I I ideologically by their teachers. That's it, isn't it? It's down to what's being taught. So it's not about knowledge, it's not about uh, a curriculum, it's about being value-led. So is it a parent's job to pass on values to, to children? Is it a school's job? Is it a religious leader's job? Whose job is it to impart values rather than knowledge? Fundamentally, it's parents, of course. Um, I, I have to say, growing up, I had some wonderful teachers who actually imparted a great deal beyond knowledge too. So I, I, I think it would be remiss to say that teachers shouldn't try and be role models and pass on <coughs> valuable moral lessons to young people. I think that's really valuable and important. You know, we've all seen the Dead Poet Society. Mm. You know, they stand up for Robert Williams. It's a very, it's a very, uh, it's a very nice relationship between educators and young people when they're passing on moral principles and values for sure. But fundamentally it lies with the parents, of course, and the parents are accountable for the success or failure of their children ultimately. If... if if young people make mistakes or as they become adults don't live, you know, particularly well as, as autonomous individuals, we, we, we place the blame with the parents, and I think rightly so. So that, that would be my read on it. Well, the reason I ask you is because Please. often many people on the left say to me, but Calvin, what if the parents are bigots? What if the parents don't have the right values? Surely it's the school's job to replace those values. Well, it depends on the values, doesn't it? I mean, as a society, for instance, there are certain values which we do find reprehensible and we, and we seek not to teach. I mean, I... I I don't mean yeah, paedophilia, for instance, really? right? So I'm, I'm offering the most extreme example to mm -hmm. make a point. Um, and clearly, if there was a child in a school that was being told that by their parents that that was acceptable, I think we would broadly agree teachers should be correcting that with the child. Mm. This is obviously a more, um, a far more, not ambiguous issue, but far more, um, uh, how can I say, contested issue. Um, and you're right to say, and I'll go back to what I said a moment ago, the freedom of worship and freedom of religion is covered by equalities law and human rights law and, and fundamentally to say to a child that the faith of your parents is at odds with British values mm -hmm. it, it also has a whole other subtext let's be honest I mean I mm -hmm. don't know the the racial background of the child but if you have a child uh, who's the son or daughter of African evangelical Christians and they're being told by a white teacher these aren't British values mm -hmm. we're on some quite dodgy terrain there that is I a very believe good point. the student was Muslim. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think the student was Muslim, but the complaint was put in by a Christian family. So it wouldn't matter either way, would it? Because one of the British values yeah. that schools are taught to uphold is that British values mm -hmm. respect those of other faiths and none. Mm -hmm. Well, it, yeah, he's, he's actually violating British values himself. Right. Uh, but I think what this has drawn out is that part of this whole fudge is the introduction of British values. Now, obviously, that was done with good intent, um, but it has brought it has sort of opened the door for certain things to be brought in and taught as if they are part of British values. So, for example, you know, te teach they, teaching about tolerance, mm. the teacher could argue that teaching a, a radical gender ideology, as far as he's concerned, is teaching his students to be tolerant. And so the, defin the definition of British values and the adoption, the necessity of, of incorporating British values into the curriculum is actually opened a door for a sort of soft spot where some of this stuff can be brought in. And I think that that's something probably Ofsted, the Department for Education, you would hope, will be aware of the fact that that's actually created a kind of vulnerability within the education system. But it's quite clear that the necessity of adopting this idea of British values has actually caused problems whilst trying to fix certain problems yeah. because it was brought in to deal with the increasing diversity in society and diversity of views. Well, this is why it's so important that we have this discussion on air because Ofsted mm. have said they're waiting for government guidance. The government have said, well, this is the curriculum that we've been given. This yeah, is the policy that's potato. come through from the government. <laughs> so no one has taken responsibility for this. And mm -hmm. as you rightly pointed out a moment ago, this is a form of entryism because the resources mm. being taught in schools are not provided by the government. They're not provided by parents or teachers. Mm -hmm. They're actually from third-party uh, 
lobbyists such mm -hmm. as Stonewall, which are very clearly political in their ideology. That's the danger, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I a long time ago, did some research on the prevent uh, strategy within the curriculum. And all you have to do is look on some of the websites that provide resources for teachers to see that a lot of these ideas, contested ideas, and sometimes quite counterproductive framing is incorporated into a lot of these materials that teachers are then using, and possibly the teachers are not really even aware of these things because yeah. they're busy, rushed off their feet, and so it creates a, an opportunity for these quite, I'd say, quite radical third-party organisations to try and push these contested ideologies into schools, and then for parents to not have the parental right to say, no, you're not going to teach ideology to my children, to remove them from those classes, I think is actually overstepping the mark of what the state should be allowed to do. Indeed.